My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome back to my channel. Today, let's talk about Eve's recent update to their Eve Room temperature sensor. This could be a great way to get the temperature, humidity, and air quality of a specific room in your home. You could use it to automatically start a space heater, close your blinds, or run an air purifier based on the changing conditions. But at $99, it's a little pricey, but it does come with a lot of interesting details that I don't necessarily see in other sensors in this category. Now, you might be wondering what are some good situations situations to use a sensor like this. And if you already have that figured out, feel free to skip to the next chapter in this video. Regulating the temperature in your home is probably one of the most expensive and energy intensive things you do in your home on a day to day basis. Adding temperature sensors around your home can help you see what's happening in different parts of it and do things that take less energy than a furnace, heater or air conditioner. If the temperature rises above a certain level, maybe have a fan turn on or have the blinds closed to block out the sun. Speaking of a furnace, this can suck the humidity out of your air in the winter. Using an Eve room, you can keep an eye on those levels and adjust a whole home or room specific humidifier based on the data. Another key thing to keep an eye on is air quality. This can be a little more complicated, but it's still important. Household cleaners, cooking, and lots of other things we do as humans and animals can release potentially harmful, volatile organic compounds or VOCs into your air. You'll need an air purifier to deal with with the problem, but the Eve room could let you know and let your home kit home know if or when there's a problem. It's important to note though that the Eve room won't pick up all particulate matter in the air like smog or dust. The sensor is specifically designed to detect VOCs. As far as the rest of the hardware, the new Eve room looks pretty similar to the redesigned version released in 2018, except now it uses thread to communicate with your smart home. It serves as a thread endpoint, which means it's not not going to augment your existing thread network, but it will certainly make good use of sending data reliably with low power using thread. And if you don't have other thread accessories yet, no problem. The Eve room still works with Bluetooth LE as well. Lots of less expensive smart home sensors that read temperature and humidity use sensors that aren't very accurate in my experience. This can lead to temperatures all over the map, particularly when you're trying to compare data from two different sensors. Eve Room uses sensors from a Swiss company called Sincerion. I'm not an expert, but this looks like a company that is legit and probably makes better stuff than what you find in a lot of less expensive sensors. Due to shipping delays and other complications, Eve ended up sending me two different Eve Room units for testing. Anecdotally, I'm really impressed with how these two units have read close to the same exact temperature and and humidity with less than a degree of Fahrenheit or a couple percentage points difference on humidity. Now you might have noticed that I said that Eve sent me these sensors for review and they did so with no strings attached. I should also note that Eve sponsors some other videos I make on this channel but this video is not sponsored and I won't hold back my honest opinions about the Eve room. In order to read data straight off the sensor it has a 200 by 200 point e-ink display. The display looks good in person but it doesn't quite have the pixel density or different levels of contrast that you might see with an e-ink display on a Kindle Oasis or other high-end e-reader. There are two capacitive touch arrow buttons on either side of the display and you can tap those to advance between different ways to show the data on the screen. Unlike its little brother Eve Weather, Eve Room is meant to be used inside where it's not going to get rained on but it can survive from 0 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Eve Room uses a built-in rechargeable battery which is rated to last about six weeks. To recharge it, you have to use micro USB. I would have liked to see USB-C charging like Eve added to their new motion blinds, but unfortunately micro USB isn't going away completely anytime soon. And just like recent iPhones, Eve's room doesn't have a power adapter in the box, just a USB-A to micro USB cable. Even if they can't put USB-C on the device itself, I think a USB-C to micro USB cable would have been more future proof, especially if you're a self-centered materialist like myself, always upgrading your gadgets when you don't really need to, I have a ton more USB-C chargers lying around now than USB-A. And I think that we'll all quickly be moving away from USB-A sometime soon. Let's hope so at least. When each of my units arrived, they did have dead batteries. Now, Eve said this is not intended for what you should see when you buy an Eve room, but it does get to one of my complaints that I have with the sensor that there's no way to completely turn it off. 
So if I need to box it up and move it to a new house or just put it in storage for a while, I, I would like a way to turn it off rather than just to drain the battery to empty. Now, before you jump in the comments with rage about this, it does only take a couple hours to charge to 100%, so pretty easy on that side. And in talking to Eve, I also got another interesting bit of information. If you want, you can leave the sensor plugged in all the time so you don't have to worry about all of this charging. And in order to minimize the interference that battery charging might have on the temperature sensor reading, the EVE room will actually only draw power from the cable for a brief window of time overnight in order to recharge the battery. I haven't tested this myself, but it seems like a great option and a nice attention to detail from EVE. Setting up the EVE room is a lot like other HomeKit accessories. In this case, download the EVE app and add the device to HomeKit from there. And if you add the sensor in the EVE app instead of another other place. It'll show you a nice setup guide telling you what the next steps are once you get it added to HomeKit. I also noticed that it seemed to pick up on my iPhone's localization preference of Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. Now, come at me haters, and automatically set the Eve room to the correct measurement of Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Now, Eve talks about this next step like it's not that big of a deal, but it is pretty time consuming. So you're supposed to leave the Eve room in the room where you want it to be for half a day. And then you're supposed to take it out to a well ventilated area with as close to pristine air quality as possible for about 30 minutes. For many people, this will be outside, but certainly not your garage. But why? Why do we need to do this? Well, the air quality sensor needs to be calibrated to know what good and bad looks like. Since Eve ended up sending me two of these sensors, I took one outside for calibration and left the other inside the whole time. Then I tested spraying household cleaner and lighting a candle to see how it would react. The calibrated one that was outside for 30 minutes seemed to pick up on the changes much more quickly than the one I kept inside, but both ultimately noticed the air quality issues. Still, Eve recommends you calibrate the device. Now, getting back to that scenario of moving I mentioned earlier, Eve recommends that if you have an Eve room and you move it to a new location, uh, that you remove the device from HomeKit, reset the hardware, and repeat the setup and calibration process. And so if you need to do that, maybe shutting the device off might not be all that big of a deal after all. Eve's app has a great detail view for the Eve room where you can see graphs of historical data for the sensor. This, more than automations in my opinion, can be an extremely useful tool if you're trying to troubleshoot intermittent temperature or air quality issues. One of the current downsides of HomeKit is just a lack of historical data about what happened in your home. And Eve overcomes that here with these great graphs and raw measurements. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up a simple automation with this sensor, and then I'll talk about how it compares to other air quality sensors. So I'm here in the Eve app, and if you select the automation tab and then go to rules at the top for scenes, timers, and rules, then I'm gonna add a new rule for this sensor. Now, Eve sets this up as triggers, conditions, and scenes. So a trigger is something that causes the actual automation to start. A condition is something that can cause it to stop, you know, so like it only happens if this condition or all of the conditions are true or one of the conditions are true. And then the scenes is whatever kind of action happens. So what kind of a scene do you want to trigger in your smart home? So I'm gonna hit next and choose a trigger. So I'm gonna go into the air quality option and it's under my office. Now I have a couple air quality sensors here. I'm selecting the Eve room here, of course, because that's what we're talking about. So if I wanna, I wanna set it that if it gets worse or equal to two stars of a rating. So uh, you can't specify numeric values here. It's gonna be based on Eve's star measurements. Uh, so then I hit add. So it's then if it's worse or equal to in inferior air quality then and I could add another trigger so if a different sensor or a different level is triggered you're not confined to just one trigger here and then I can hit next 
And I'm not gonna worry about any conditions now, but it could be something like if it's after sunset or before sunrise or something else like that, certain times of day, uh, uh, different other conditions. Uh, that's a subject for another video. Uh, I'm gonna hit next and then I'm gonna choose a scene. Now, I'm actually gonna add a scene here. So we're gonna add a scene and then add an action to the scene, which is in my office, I also have an Eve Energy smart plug. So Eve makes smart plugs and that's hooked up to an air purifier that's not smart. It just needs an, a smart plug to turn it on and off when it cuts the power to the air purifier on and off. So. If I go down here to the office air purifier, I'm gonna choose the schedule of the outlet to turn on. So, um, or not the schedule, the power of the outlet to turn on, hit add. And so then I have an action to turn on the office air purifier. And then I can give the scene a name here. Now, a quick tip for any kind of home kit automations, you wanna use scenes because that way, as you add and remove accessories and change the configuration of your home, any of the automations you might have that trigger that scene will automatically work because you're just adding or removing accessories from a scene. You're not having to go into all your like five different automations that might trigger that scene and change details there. And you smart automation masters out there can probably already see how you would make another automation in reverse to turn off the air purifier when the air quality is restored above a certain level. So if you own an Akara hub, you can get one of their air quality sensors for less than $50 US. But in my experience, the temperature sensor is not as accurate. The device is made of plastic instead of this nice aluminum. It requires an Akara hub instead of using thread and you need to create an Akara account and the app doesn't have as nice of a way of showing historical data as Eves does in my opinion. For some people you might hear those and think the Akara option is a way better deal but you might also hear those and see all the reasons to upgrade to an Eve room for $99. And while it's best to use Eve's app to manage their home kit accessories you don't need to create another account with Eve and Eve doesn't collect any personally identifiable information from you. So while the air quality can be complicated to calibrate and it still charges with micro USB, getting another sensor that runs on thread is a welcome upgrade to an already premium product from Eve in this space. Now, if you want to monitor what's going on outside your house, Eve has a product for that using thread called Eve Weather. I made a video about that that's linked somewhere here on the screen. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.